Twitter and Google. Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. <laughs> If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology. This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? With you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. It's the world's number one interview show, the new global home of big debates and big questions. This is really unfair. Why? We'll explain why. For all the big names. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. You're going to, you're going to resign? Yeah, of course, I cannot continue my work. Did you feel Elvis was a controlling influence on you? And the good news? You've already found it. All new Piers Morgan Uncensored, right here, Monday to Thursday, 8 p.m. Ever feel like you're not part of the conversation? That you're not getting the full picture on the important issues. Or the stories that impact your life. Jim, who was on at the last hour waiting a year for a heart operation, blew us out of the water. Well, at Talk TV, we cover the issues you care about. I would love to give the nurses a massive pay rise. Give them one, then. With proper debate and argument, we tell it how it really is. And have some fun along the way. Talk TV for the stories that matter. Very good morning, it's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. <laughs> yes, this that is... a bit nice. Hello. <laughs> right, this is the late night phone-in <laughs> on Talk TV. And I will tell you, if it was a chaotic changeover normally, today has taken the biscuit, hasn't it? Has. it? Right, it so has. Right, so you're going to introduce a guest in a moment, but it's fair to say we really struggled to get his microphone not wonky. <laughs> we've got engineers, we've got experts <laughs> here, and it just hasn't worked. Now, Danielle, before we do anything else, I just want to talk to you about something that... You know, it's been very painful for me and very difficult this week. Okay. And I know you witnessed it. Okay. I'm going to ask you 
as the viewers and the listeners to guess what happened to me when I did a Q&A at a film festival in Leicester Square this week. I, I've got a friend of mine who says that if he worked nine to five, Monday to Friday, for a million years, he would not guess what happened. I started off the q and I'm not very experienced at doing film Q&A. It was going OK. It wasn't the best thing I'd ever done in my life. Now, when I tell you this, I just want to assure you that my stroganoff over dinner was not magic mushrooms. I'm literally <laughs> telling you the truth when I say <laughs> that Jedwood took to the stage, invaded the stage, took the microphone off me and threw me off the stage. I'm a witness. And took charge of the interview. It's right, it absolutely happened. Now, of all the things that is ever going to happen to you, Jedwood taking over your Q&A... I mean, I'm sp I am I don't know what to say. Do you know what I did like, though? I think it's something that they do, but what I did like was that you knew both their names. Well, I mean, I mean, on the plus side, I knew the name was Jordan Edward Grimes. On the negative side, they threw me off the stage for being boring. They said, was... he's boring, and kicked him off to the side. It was just perfect. The, the, pro the, pro the, pro the problem is, uh, look, I spied to Jedward in the hair department. I think sometimes you have Jedward hair, yeah. But, but, but my view was, when they took the stage, and they got that fake accent, oh, John, come no, over here. I don't here. think that's Why a fake accent. I think that is their accent. I've been to Dublin. <laughs> that is not a Dublin accent, right? <laughs> but, but the thing was, when they took over the stage, I thought to myself, what can I do? Imagine I tried to wrestle them, which, by the way, me, as a fat, hurry northern bloke wrestling Jedwood at a film festival... They wouldn't think, give you a chance. I think they were have, all over it. would have been worse. Calling security, well, there wasn't any. I, I just felt I had to acquiesce. You just gave up, didn't you? Now, this is a phone-in. If you've got any thoughts on wrestling Jedward, then you are welcome to contact the yeah. show. You can tell there's no script writers. 0344 499 1000 is the number to call. Look, this is the end of the week, and the purpose of this show is just to have a bit of fun. You can talk about the big issues of the week, or you can talk about what's gone on in your week. I imagine you haven't wrestled Jedward. But you know, you have a different life to me. Well, look, it's, we're on the we're on the uh, topic of um, Jedwood, <laughs> of film premieres. No, we're on the topic where of I was going to go with that. Wrestling well, Jedwood, yeah, yeah, wrestling Jedwoods at, at film premieres, as you do. Um, and speaking of which, I was at this film premiere the other week. Lewis is a dangerous individual, and the coaching masters is a cult. Psychotherapy, psychiatry, coaching. All of it is just talking. If you have an opinion that doesn't sit with Lewis, you're exiled. If it is a cult, I'm going. It changed everything. He says we feel empathy. Psychopaths would say that. Am I this lovely person? <laughs> or am I a cold, calculating psychopath? Who doesn't love? A good Netflix documentary, though. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you scared? Are you nervous? Oh, I, I hadn't seen it before you showed it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not well, being funny. He, no, he's not as terrifying as that well, trailer well, may no, suggest. No, he, he has literally consented to have that put on television about himself. Well, let's introduce him. No, this no, no. Before you introduce him, okay. if he eats my liver with some flava beans and a nice Chianti, <laughs> I'm going to go wild. It'll he be did, your fault. He did send me a message on the WhatsApp group saying, will he be bringing a bloodied axe, which right. was quite... I mean, I mean, I'll at least Hannibal that. Lecter denied being a psychopath. Okay. <laughs> and yet Do this guy freely admits just... it. This is Lewis Raymond Taylor from The Psychopath Life Coach, which is currently out on Netflix and doing amazing. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for letting me be here. Clap him, clap him. Clap, 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 clap me for being Lewis. a psycho. Come on. Yeah, yeah. He needs a round of applause for being a psycho. <laughs> I mean, ha what's it like being a psycho? I mean, I don't know what to say. Well, right, let me got... start with this, yeah. though, obviously. Yeah, we've got how some long have you been a psycho? How long? Yeah, last, because... Last week, you because a bit culty I would, yeah. of women of a certain age. Well, mm. all I've got to say is, right, so I'm in the audience, right, with, right. with what would be a spattering of celebrities, of course, with it being a film premiere, but there was a, a so When heavy... you say spattering, were they all in one piece? They were, yeah, they weren't. So spat, they spattering, weren't you mean multiple, out. not... Yes. Yeah, I hadn't murdered them. Um, no, he hadn't, he hadn't got his bloody <laughs> axe out. Um, but, by the way, I wouldn't need an axe. 
<laughs> I think it is, I think it is important to bear in mind that you you are not well you're not actually a murderer. No, no. Let's just, no, no. Obviously, obviously, no. Lewis hasn't murdered anyone. Don't worry. That's a, a, I just like that very very. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm slightly worried. But don't, I mean. don't be scared. It's fine. That's but right. but the thing is, I did realise that a lot of your audience was women. Right. You're a very charming, handsome man. Oh, thank you. And of course, <clears throat> they were all slightly in love with you. I think it's fair to say. Like, I've literally, the woman sat to this side, and two women over that that side were like, everything you said, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what you do when you want to impress your new boyfriend. Right. <laughs> well, I've never seen that because most of my stuff's been doing online. It now. <laughs> She's one of them. So these, uh, women, so these women of a certain age, what was yeah. this certain age? No, I just mean um, not younger women, right. but not older women, like of my age group. I'd say women in the 30s and the 40s. So tell us what it's about. What, without spoiling it, what is it all about? Oh, that's a hard one to summarise. So um, I went through a lot of trauma when I was younger, and that caused me to do a lot of uh, bad things. Uh, alongside it was also diagnosed with this antisocial personality disorder which was categorized as a psychopath right. um, and lots of uh, prison time drugs alcohol um, and eventually got to the point where I realized I wanted to change my life inside of prison and to try and cut it as short as possible without you know because it's an hour and a half documentary to explain yep. it obviously in a lot of detail but I realized that I couldn't keep ruining my life and harming other people because I was um, you know not just physically you know having fights and things but you know my parents and um, so I realised I needed to make a change and I couldn't keep blaming everything and everyone around me for why my so, life was so difficult so, so look look let, let, let's be genuine about this you have turned your life around you've been incredibly successful um, clearly any personality disorder is related to trauma right so so clearly you, you will have had a difficult life in that respect Um how how can you how can you evangelize for supporting people who have mental health problems given that so many people in your position are dangerous mm. yes yeah, difficult one uh, i think there's a spectrum on the uh, the personality disorders and i think that it makes them more prone to being dangerous uh, but i don't necessarily means that they all are and a lot of them aren't you know mm. um there's very uh, there's a lot of social groups that you will, will be in where there will be a lot of people with personality disorders in there, but they're just very high functioning and do a very good job of just covering it up. So how did you make the money that you made? Because you have made an awful lot of money. Mm. How did you make your money? Changing people's lives. In what way? So the main thing that we did is we created a, a brand new coaching um, education system. So we help qualify other life coaches. So if you want to become a life coach, you come to us and we have the education to do it. And we also teach people how to build online businesses so they get to work remotely and change people's lives. It's a perfect opportunity. And it so are you the that advert that keeps coming up on my YouTube every time? Yeah. Like, you yeah. can work from home. You could be yeah. like me, lying on a lilo in the middle in of Bali. the... Oh, no. There is, there is, there is, in there is, oh, no. There is. I, I think in the past. I think in the past ten years, there's been some serious academic work done on what I think is now called a corporate psychopath. Now, I wasn't familiar with this. You will be. I'm just going to explain this for the viewers and listeners. Historically, what people have believed is that psychopaths are all evil, all dangerous, and it's a nightmare. But actually, the the view now is, and, and they're all in prison. The view now is that actually there there are two categories, well, actually multiple categories of people with psychopathic tendencies. Some who are disillusioned, maybe come from bad educational backgrounds, will end up in criminality. But actually, without being funny, the privileged private school ones actually have entered the corporate world, and that will have two results. Number one, they will be highly driven. Uh, number two, they will generally be uh, associated with bullying in the workplace because of an inability to understand how to treat other people around them. But actually, um, it is not true to say that every psychopath in prison, actually, the leaders of many major companies are probably corporate psychopaths. And probably politicians as well. I'm sure that's right. Ooh. No, no, no. No, I, I genuinely believe the bullying culture in the House of Commons when I worked there is largely associated with people who just didn't understand they were being... Twatish for doing it. Oh wow! <laughs> and there's certain decisions that just need to be made with a very logical approach. That you know, emotional. You know, if you're co constantly consumed with emotion, um, you can't make. What's, high what, what, what don't you think why, why make? Why make the film? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go on. Why make the film? 
Because look, you've exposed uh, yourself to yeah. criticism. I've criticised you. I've just, I've just taken the mick out of you, right? Oh, I, but, I thought but, that was. I thought it was a good thing. But, 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 but why, why, why expose that. yourself in that way? I don't see it as exposing myself. I, just, I see it as sharing a message, and I think there's a lot of uh, people out there that are marginalised that are probably, you know, experiencing similar things that don't have any hope because personality disorders are supposed to be incurable as well. Yeah. Um, when they are curable, in a sense that where you can learn to manage it and bring awareness to it and and channel it into a more productive area, so it can be curable in terms of the symptoms it has in your life, and it's 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 got a bad stigma to it, so people aren't talking about it, and people are probably hiding and and not sharing their true selves for fear of. Uh, you know, yeah, how people yeah, criticise yeah, them. Yeah, but to be fair, sorry, I keep interrupting. No, okay. I do apologise. I'm just fascinated by this. Well, but, but see, the minute I hear psychopath, I think about Hannibal Lecter yeah. and start making jokes about eating livers and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Look, that's inevitable, right? We've all seen the film. Yeah, but, but as I have this antisocial personality disorder, this fear of uh, um, judging me or whatever just doesn't come... I don't get it, so yeah. I don't care. So you know, it doesn't so, affect yeah. you in the no, same no. way. So you put me on national TV How does that, that way, that's well, fine. Can I, there's two parts to this question. I want to ask you firstly, you did ruin some people's lives by your behaviour yeah. beforehand, mm -hmm. and now you're a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's fair? Well, I've also uh, qualified 8,000 coaches that have gone off and helped thousands of people who then have then helped then thousands of people, so the ripple effect of that is millions. So I would say... If you put it in perspective, I've done more good than bad. Okay. Yeah, but if your yeah, but if your business is uh, being paid by the coaches, then actually that potentially is an exploitative business. And I'll explain why. Because if I decide I want to be a life coach, I pay you whatever it is to become a life coach. I might not have a business afterwards. And the adverts that you run potentially are encouraging people to change their lives by becoming a coach, not by consuming the product. Ergo, that's potentially going to be a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we talk about become your first client, you know, and I went through that journey. You know, you, when you go through a journey to become a coach and you learn the tools, the techniques, the models and the frameworks, you can't help but apply that to yourself. And you're going to be in an entirely different place by the end of it. And, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't promise any uh, employment at the end of it. We don't promise that you'll be a massive success. We say that you can be, and we know for a fact you, you can be. Because you have disgruntled... People, of course we have, yeah, you? but I mean, how many people that have got a university degree that go out and are unemployed after their degree, you know? So this is, <laughs> education is not always going to guarantee a result. What yeah. about, so what about the negative feedback that you've had where people have said that maybe it's a cult? Yeah, it is a cult. It is a cult? Oh, it's a lovely cult. Yeah. And you're all right you, with that? If, if you categorise a group of people that want to make the world a better pl place a cult, I'll be there But leader. it's bad if those people aren't making decisions for themselves. Oh, I don't, I'm not a dictator or anything like that, and I don't come in there. I mean, I mean with, with, the, that's where's their the line? View. No, with, 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 with respect, that's not the definition of a cult. The definition of a cult is not a group of people who want to make the world a better yeah, place. Yeah. Uh, the, the definition of a cult is a group of people who have been, uh, who have been, who've been brainwashed into being commanded and controlled against their best interests. Mm -hmm. so, so, look, I mean, I don't mind that you have okay, a different well, I, definition of yeah, cult yeah. than me, but, but the allegation that she's putting to you is not you've been accused of making the world a better place by getting together with people, the allegation is, uh, presumably, yeah. that you have been controlling people's minds um, in order to financially okay. exploit them. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, on that definition, it was a bit of a joke when I said, I, obviously, I run a cult. Of course, mm. I do not run a cult, yeah. I have to say. But, you know, there is different definitions of it. And, yeah. you know, people can... It's also a community. That's what we call it, a community. A community. And, yeah. Okay. And, you know, is it... People will have their own opinions of it. And so it, so I, think, I think we, we haven't quite answered that question. How do you answer the allegation that you are exploitative in the cult? Uh, I'm not. Go and see all the happy customers that are shouting and screaming and you so, know, so in love with me. Why would they do that? Why would, why would because people accuse some you of them are, are disgruntled because they haven't got the results. And as simple as that. But that's oh, not my... You know, I'm not responsible for a 100% success rate of every single person. But if you, sell, show but if you, but if you sell dreams to people, there is... And by the way, this doesn't make you a cult. But if you sell dreams to people and take their money, inevitably there will be people who will be thrown out the other side who, who spent all their money in the hope of success. How how do you, uh, let me put it another way, how do you protect people who are vulnerable in that way from, from being financially exploited by, by any legitimate product? Hmm. 
I don't think that's my responsibility. I mean... Well, I'm, I think it is, with respect. OK, well, with respect, I think that education also has to have the same question pointed at them. You know, they're also selling a dream, and there's you see the, the Royal Navy adverts, you, you know, you could be in the Royal Navy, yeah. you can well, go no, and no, change no, life. But, 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 but the and dream of joining the Royal Navy is you join the Royal Navy. The dream of going to the University of London is you go to the University of London. Yeah. The dream you're you selling is that. to make your life better, which might fail. Yeah, but University of London, is that to make your life better? No, no, the adverts, don't, no, the adverts don't say... Uh, the univ uh, apply to us and your life will be better. They say apply to us and we'll teach you the following. What I don't think no remember rem 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 there, there is a well. subtle there is a subtle difference. There is a subtle difference between selling an education and selling a dream. I, it doesn't bother me, but there is a uh, difference. So you, so you think there's no marketing going on in universities and no no I'm just I'm just saying that when you say to me uh, that uh, the universities are selling the same thing that you're selling the, the answer is they're not and i'll tell you why and no, i'll tell you why in detail point number one a university gives you an academic qualification that is accredited internationally at so, the end of it which so you do us. not do no we do right so, you're, no, so you are a recognized academic institution by the uk universities authorities no but okay so you, so you don't do that no, i'm not being critical but you don't do that it's just a different regulation but, but no but, but still it is still not it is not it is qualified. not a record no but it is not a recognized in you, in academic qualification no not in my mind there is a formal process well, i don't the don't, one don't you take believe. the no don't no, no, take the one that you believe no, no, i believe no, no, a different no no, no, academic no it's not it's not a matter of belief there is a formal process which you've failed to Who attend created that? no well, hang on a second hang on a second we're either going to be serious or we're not going to be serious there is a formal process i don't believe there is a formal well you can believe what you want there is a formal process of accreditation mm -hmm. of academic qualifications which you are not offering nothing wrong we with that there's plenty there's plenty of uh, qualifications that do not offer formal accreditation equally the next difference between you and the university is that you are selling a dream of a better life they are selling a qualification now the nature of this is that in the case of a university if you fail to get a job afterwards, they have discharged their duty, I'll tell you why. Because they have given you the academic qualification mm -hmm. you have applied to get. In your case, you are saying the end result of this, of this thing we're doing is going to be that your life will be better. If you fail to discharge that, you've got two problems. Number one, it's very much harder for you to walk away than it is for the university. But number two, you also have to do something, and something that's upset me about this interview, and I'm gonna be serious about this, you do have to have a duty of care for bluntly stupid people who might give you their money at not understanding any of it. You have to be able to say to me, in my view, you have to be able to say to me, this is not right for X customer. Mm -hmm. Whereas it sounds like, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, yeah. you don't give a toss. OK, cool. Well, you're going to give me a, a bit yeah, of time yeah. to sure. respond. I've, I've spoken for a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, Go cool. For, for a start... We allow people to make their own choices. We're not manipulating anybody. So we run adverts that then lead to a 20-minute free masterclass, which then leads through to a $9.99 a month subscription. That's mm -hmm. how we start, OK? That's £8 okay. a month. Which is low cost. And that's that actually gives you uh, the education you need to go out and start learning how to become a coach, developing your own mindset, and even starting to learn some of the social media stuff to even get some clients to make some money. Mm -hmm. If they want to upgrade from that, we do offer accredited uh, qualifications. They are internationally quality by the International Coaching Federation. They're equivalent of a level one. They're, they're nothing uh, majorly academic, but they are a substantial qualification. And it, it is a, um, it, it's an unregulated industry in terms of... Uh, how you would see government mainstream education, but it is an internationally registered uh, and recognised accreditation. Mm. Um, and very few people can go through that. It took This took years to go through that training to be able to become an accredited coaching trainer, to be able to deliver those qualifications as well. So just tell me about the International Coaching Federation. Yeah, they've been, they've been, mean, around, I mean, since, they've been around for decades and they have hundreds of thousands of... Uh, people that have been accredited under there your crimes what were your crimes what did you what did you actually go to prison for um gbh right the, 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 the last one yeah. so you uh, assaulted someone yeah and did, was he badly harmed yeah and is he alive is he's he, alive yeah. yeah and is he well yeah he's fine now um does just, he know about this documentary well, uh, we tried to reach out to him. Um, you tried to? Him, to? Uh, yeah. Well, and I've, and I've also tried to reach out to him during a res uh, restorative justice in uh, pro probation as well. Really? Yeah. See, I'm really into the restorative justice thing, so I, I really do get behind that, and I really respect that. So you have reached out to him or, and, and or his family? Or, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I've, we've but tried he to. But he hasn't, he's, he's not, not responded. Respond, no. Okay, okay. And what, how do you, because what must be difficult 
is that when you injure somebody or you affect their life like that, you affect, even if even if now he is well, you affect their life for a considerable amount of time. And now you're a successful millionaire, right? That would sting for anybody. And to think that it's because... so. I agree that you should be able to repent for what you've done. You know, you no point punishing someone for the rest of their life. But do you, how do you feel about the idea that, that uh, as Andre says, that in a way you're still exploiting people in in a respect, in some way, even though it's I mean, now you're not beating people up, but I mean, I don't, you're selling I don't, them a dream? I don't see it as exploitive. I mean, if, if you see the results of our community, I mean, it's not all of them, you know, are at equal measure, of course, because we're all different individuals. Right. But we have people that have made millions of dollars, you know, from our programme. Yes, but you've, also, but, you've also, but, you've also, but you've also come on this show, and I've just... I've, the reason I was looking down, I've looked at the International Coaching Federation. Tell me what it is. Right now, honestly, tell me what it is. It's an international governing body for coaching. Yes, it's a trade association founded in 1995 that is not recognised as an academic body anywhere in the world. And you've come on this show, and look, I don't want to have but a go at you. you say no, I, no, so no, hang on a second. You've come on this show, and I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. I don't want to have a go at you. No, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm very sorry. Well, let me tell you what my anger issue is. Are. Yeah. Don't you insult the viewers and listeners of my show by claiming that you are offering an academic qualification an academic by a you trade did. association. Re listen to the tape back by a trade association accredited. founded in 1995. I can be accredited to my mum's toilet. Yeah. Uh, and then it would make no difference. You are not an academic body. You've compared was. yourself to universities during this broadcast. I personally think you're taking the piss. I think you're a nice guy, but I think you've gone and spun this far, far far too hard. It is not true to say that you are offering accredited anything. I mean, you know what? I'll tell Who's you what we can say do. what accredited is? Someone decides. And so, and your but, academic but, 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 thing but that I'm you're sorry, so the internet, obsessed with and, and that, and is, that, is, and that, is your view of what... And that uh, be, is your view of what accreditation and is. Your, and, your, and, and that answer My would be, view of accreditation and answer, is And that different. answer would be correct if it wasn't for the terms and conditions of the International Coaching Federation, which is you can only be credit accredited if you're a trade body. You can't be personally accredited to it. So literally, not only are you wrong, uh, but it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. A trade I mean, body found you in look, 1995. You've down on your iPhone in, in two seconds and now you're an expert. So. Oh, come on. At the end it's of the day, their own we, website. We have helped people change their lives. They're entirely grateful for what we've been able I mean, to provide just, for them. We've had people every, that... It, yeah, it's so just, look at all we've the just, negative. We've just changed the narrative that many times. We've just changed the narrative that many times. I'm not impressed. Honestly, I'm not impressed. Well, then and you're I, and I understand. I understand you've you been successful. Carry on being Jedward's dad, I, I and that's fine. I understand. <laughs> I understand. That's I understand. fine. Being Jedward at you. Well, look, I've been Jedward's dad, at you. and I, I that would be completely fine. Look, I understand you've been successful, but for me personally, mm. for me personally, as somebody who holds academic qualifications, I just think that what you've said. I think in you're terms a bit triggered of, by it because you know that. Well, I'm triggered yeah, by it. Yeah, of course, yeah, because you waste all your, your money and you've been marketed well, by another well, company. But at least, but a different than mine. But with respect, at least I'm not handing my money over to a psychopathy thinks you can be credited by his course when you can't be, which, by the way, by the way, is coming very close to fraudulent. Okay. I think we should leave it at that. OK, cool. I think the Netflix documentary is brilliant. And by the way, I'd definitely watch it. I mean, yeah. definitely watch and now it. he's definitely going to watch it. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm definitely going to watch it now. <laughs> That's it. Now you have to, see? We've just made you want to watch it. On a serious note, thank you so much for coming in, Lewis. I really right. appreciate it. He's a tough guy to, to argue no, with. No, Wait listen, till I get you outside. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, That'll listen. Be it. Listen, they'll be fighting. We always and he's a psycho. No, we, no, he'll they, win. We, we always appreciate people coming on the show and have a robust debate. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. You. Dad. Do it. Yeah. Do wish you all the best. And remember to check it out. It's on Netflix. It's called The Psychopath Life Coach, and it is a good watch. It's very, very interesting. As is Lewis and Andre's now, debate. Now, now, are we going to a break now? We're we going to calls now. Okay, <laughs> let's go to a break. We'll be taking your calls in a moment.
the freshest phones are reduced with club card prices. So you can get the Samsung Galaxy S23 with unlimited data for just $39.99 a month with club card prices, saving you a whopping £594. This deal can't last forever, so don't miss out. This is Supermarket Mobile. To switch, pop in store or search Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Everything is fun on a trip to Texas. You could do this. Or try this. It doesn't even matter what you do. Actually, it does matter. I'm obsessed with food and sports and music. This is our trip to Texas. Go get your own. It may have a long history. It may have witnessed a lot. Climbing to the heavens, it's just gone 10 a.m. on this momentous day. It may have sentimental value. But if it's time to sell your watch, sell it with Fine Watch Club. We can buy your watch and have the cash with you in as little as 24 hours. We'll offer you our most favorable price. Sell your watch today. To arrange a valuation, call us or visit finewatchclub.co.uk. Don't miss the biggest ever Gold Reserves Black Friday sale. Take advantage of genuine discounts on new and pre-loved jewellery. Vintage diamond jewellery is now up to 20% off. And up to 25% off our new heavy gold range. Our pre-loved Welsh gold is also up to 20% off. And up to 50% off vintage gold and silver jewellery. Sale only lasts till midnight on the 28th of November, or while stocks last. Stores located at Swansea, Cardiff and Clenetley. Shop online at goldreserves.co.uk. Train, play and stay at The Nest. A high quality football break in Norfolk. State of the art pitches, first class facilities and on-site accommodation and catering. Everything you need for the perfect football trip for your team. Training, fixtures and excursions for all ages and all levels. The Nest hosts teams from all around the country and abroad. Play competitive fixtures or mini tournaments against local sides. Search The Nest Norwich and start planning your team's visit now. Sky's Bigger Black Friday deals are here with Sky and Netflix for our lowest price, just £19 a month. Watch award-winning Sky shows together with the best of Netflix. Classy. Start watching tomorrow with next day delivery, no dish, all streamed over Wi-Fi. Get some back. Welcome back to Talk TV. This is your late night phone in. We are back to the phone line, so please pick up the phone 0344 499 1000. 0344 499 1000. Or you can text the word talk tell you what and I'm your message do. to 87 treble 2. Calm down. Is that what you're going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the hardware store and buy a barge pole to not touch that training course with. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. We've added some text messages, haven't we? Okay, let, let me put them on the big screen. Oh, OK. Then. Hi, Andre. That guy sounded like a con man, but I wish you'd given him more rope by letting him speak a bit longer. He could have hung himself. That was from Rachel. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's fair to say when he said I was triggered, I think I was triggered. You right? were triggered. I, 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 I you were that, triggered. You did lose your cool a little tiny bit. Hi, after watching you two, um, watching that man there, I would say you did more than GBH because he hesitated too long before he answered. Very dodgy from Deborah in Seacroft, Leeds. I mean, I will say one thing. I will say one thing in his defence. He has come on a national television and radio show, yep. having been convicted of multiple uh, crimes that are pretty it serious. Takes, I'm sorry, it takes some... And, and, and was willing to face a battering. Right? Exactly. Well, I think it takes some balls. I think, uh, yeah. And if you watch, if you watch the Psychopath Live Coach, the actual program, you will. I mean, it's, also, it's I think an it's an interesting watch. I think it's also worth that. bearing in mind how well was the interview with the psychopath going to go, right? <laughs> if you just think about that from a planning point of view. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. David. Let's, David and Coleraine. Hi, David. Hi, I love you. You look well tonight. Oh, <laughs> to you. thanks. I'm telling you, ringing the bike. Well, James was way hard on his friend. You had to tell James to be hard on him. And I'm ringing about this fellow 
We was taking the money away by Bobby. I think it was he was dishonest. He's very dishonest. He had to steal him. He was very dishonest. I guess he's he we were follow I I listened to the program there. I was listening to him what he did. He took money of Peter Wright. I call it dis uh, he was dishonest. Yeah, David, 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 can I tell you my, my view on it? My view is this. First of all, I, have n I will tell you one thing that's genuine. That man had no understanding of what accredited academic qualifications were. He's not, he's not lying about that, but he shouldn't be selling accredited academic qualifications if he doesn't actually right. know what they are. Sorry. I want to tell you something. He's a Judas. He's a what? He's a Judas. Judas. Oh. <laughs> Th 30 pieces. Well, I, I'll tell you something. He's got way more than 30 pieces of silver. Let me tell you. I'm, I'm with you and he's took, he, he said he's a man or why not give me, why not give the money back to people who took off the money? Take that money and give it back to him again. Would you, would you ever do like, see, this is a weird thing nowadays, isn't it? Life no, no, coaching. No, 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 would you do I, life I, coaching, I David? My money, I don't do it and I'm not very long. I love, I, I don't, love, I don't, um, you know I mean? my money, Clean money, and I take, I take no money of nobody. I'm stealing. I call that stealing. I'm stealing. Stealing, right. Well, oh, I've, I've, got to be, I've got to be honest with you, David. David, we have a laugh with I, you I because... David, we have, laugh with, we have a laugh I, with you. I, 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 you can't trust Lost him. you again. I just trust you and your friend there. You and your friend. A very nice friend. And you think you're very nice for the show. And you make a good show to two years. But Dave, David, David, I, we we have a bit of a laugh with you because you've got very, a very strong Northern Irish accent. But to me, but to me, let, let me let me say this: my honest view, my honest view. Look, there are people who do real jobs. There are people who do real things. You know, you go out farming every day, and what people forget is the vast. I think it's something like two thirds of the pork and two thirds of the beef consumed in the United Kingdom comes from Northern <laughs> Ireland. People forget that, right? But you do real. Oh, I'm a life coach. You know, I'm a social media it's, influencer. It's very, oh, it's yeah, it's, it's a new. New, new thing, it's not a new it? thing, it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I call it, I call it, I call it stealing. <laughs> he calls it stealing. There okay, David, thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you, David. Ken? Remember, if you want to give us a call, it's 0344 499 1000. The number's there, I think. Yeah, there on the screen. Um, Ken, we've got Ken, Ken on the line. Hi, Ken. Hello, Daniel and Andre. Hello. I was at the, I was at the, the, Palestinian match today, and can I just pass on you some information? Mm -hmm. You know when they when they shout out from the river to the sea. Yes. You know they, they are, that is a promise God gave to the people of Israel. It is a wonderful promise in Genesis chapter fifteen that God says. This is what He says: On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, "To your descendants, Israel, I have given this land from the river of Egypt." to the great river, the river Euphrates. The river of Egypt refers to the Mediterranean, to the river Euphrates. So when they quote from the river to the sea, they are quoting God's promise. But they're doing it, the but they're doing, they're, 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 can, I, can I use this word? They're bastardizing it, because what they're yeah. actually doing is they're using it to, to, to justify genocide. Correct, but listen, the, the, the amazing thing is here, when they're out protesting against the Jews, they are, all, they are quoting what God says in the Bible when he promised by covenant that he would give the land of Israel to the Jews from the river of the Nile to the river Euphrates. And that includes parts of it's Iraq, Syria, uh, Syria, and Jordan. So the land of Israel is a very large area, and when Messiah returns, the Jews will take over all those boundaries which are covenanted can, by can God you to been, them can in the you've been to You've been to a lot of the protests. I always think you're an incredibly brave guy. A lot of people don't agree with what you say. A lot of people do, by the way. Um, but you're, you're an incredibly brave guy. I know you don't think of yourself like that, but you go out with your sandwich board preaching the word of God. But you go to all these Palestinian protests. Is it possible for any sensible police officer to claim that these Palestinian protests are entirely peaceful and involve no racism whatsoever. Does that have any credibility? No, they're totally racist, Andre. They're totally... It's driven by hatred for the people of Israel. But let, let me tell you something about the police. The police are wonderful to the Christians in this city. They allowed me to preach the gospel for yep. 20 minutes today right in front of the, of the Downing Street. Yes. They were all lined up. 
and they allowed me to preach about Jesus Christ and his second coming at the front of down the street for 20 minutes. And then just after I had finished, then they all paraded down the street with their hatred against the people of Israel. Israel will not be defeated. They are God's covenant people. And those who fight against Israel fight against the king of Israel, who is Jesus, the Messiah. Ken, can I just ask defeated. you very quickly, because we've got to go on to another call. I, I believe you've been banned from James Wales' show. What's that? Have you been banned yes. from James's yeah, show? Banned for life, tonight, apparently. Daniel. I phoned up tonight, Daniel, and they've been banned. So when James says it's free speech, sorry, James, you're telling lies. Mm. The only one who Why were you banned? Speech. What did you say, Ken? What did I say? Yeah. Well, the last time, the last well, time I think it's pretty on. obvious what he said, because he says the same thing in every single call. Right? It's yeah, not as if Jesus. he's advocated pornography, is it? <laughs> Let's be no. honest. But what was it that well, really annoyed James? Well, what, what I said to James the last time I was on, I said, James, you are a vile, evil Christian hater. Ooh. And you should be. And, you and should he got upset. Television. That's what I said, because he, he hates the, the Christian people. He, he no, he hatred. does not. That's a, that's a big claim, hatred. that Ken. Um, I, I know he doesn't hate anyone. And I, I, lo I love James Will. I'm not against him personally, but I'm telling the truth. He, he, is, uh, he incites. Well, his wife's a Christian. Christians. And he married okay, her. Ken, Ken, thank so you so much. Be that angry. I think there's a definition of hating Christians, which is a higher benchmark for Ken that is. By the way, can I just ask you a question? Go on. We're trying to run this show seriously. Ken, what did you say to James Well? Was it about Christianity? I mean, what were you expecting him to say? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Oh, no. I'd like to know what he said. And he said, Well, I told him he was a vile. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, oh, well, then that's going to get you banned. Yeah. I'll tell you what Ken did. He, he explained the conspiracy theory about the landing on the moon. No, he talked about Christianity because he talks about Christianity. And he gave. Poor James and had time by the sounds of it. Right, quick fire calls now. Um, so, so we're just... basically just going to give you a minute to talk and then we'll buzz you off, but it won't be offensive or upsetting. It's literally just because we're going to try and get through as many calls as we can. So now's your time to give us a call. There are some lines free. It's 0344. Four double nine one thousand ring us right now if you want to get your call on. In fact, everybody just has. Yay! <laughs> no, they haven't. You're lying. All they the have. That does come up then. Right, Erica is in Bristol. Erica, I'll talk to you. Why are they not coloured? Right. Don't... Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> right. So, so I'll tell you what. We, do. we don't pull the curtain back. Oh, okay. Uh, they don't know what you're looking at. Right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, no, we. Hi, we... Erica. Go on, Erica in Bristol. Uh, hi, 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 all. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Um. Got a minute. I've just got a minute. Let yes. Me tell. Well, less so um, now. I just wanted to say so much, but that guy, so, I watched Netflix. I had to turn it off. I found him really disrespectful. I think he's such a bad um, moral for, for children, young men that are, you know, that are growing up. And he, they, they're basically, he's showing people that you can hurt someone, you can be violent. And okay, yes, he did his prison sentence, but I actually don't respect anyone that nearly Erica, killed Erica, someone. Erica, 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 do me a favour. Erica, Erica's Erica, is exactly me, do, what my dad thought Erica, when he do, watched do, it. Do me, do me a favour, Erica. We, we're yeah. going we're gonna to just suspend the one-minute thing just for a couple of moments. I have not watched the documentary. I didn't particularly like him. You could see that. And, in fact, he riled yeah. me. Um, explain yeah. to me what you saw and what upset well, you as different? if I didn't watch it, because I didn't watch it. it it, he was very shallow. He thinks. Yeah, but what did he do? So he was. He thinks he's successful because he's made loads of money on people that are stupid. That's what he's made money. He's See, that was talker. my impression. He's a good, good talker, but actually, leopards don't really change their spots that much. He nearly killed someone. He nearly killed that bloke. Although I'm right. going to say one thing, Erica, in his defence. He has served his punishment, right? And, yeah, and the, but, but, that but, but that here's the thing. Make it right. That doesn't make it morally right. Here's, he, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing that worries me about him. The thing that yeah. genuinely worries me about him. Now, I don't know whether he knows this or not, but his piece of paper that he's giving you is not worth anything. It's it's worth less than the paper it's written but, on, because at least if it was a blank sheet of paper, you could sell it as a piece of paper. Me. You know why? Because of his. Is he, he? You know what he said about his girlfriend? No. He said, "Look what I've got. I've got a girl that looks like Shakira." That's 
how shallow he is. He's only interested in what he looks like. I'm not, I'm, I'm not wholly against that, if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> well, that's, that's fine. But what I'm saying is, it, it, he's as shallow as they come. And I had to turn it off. And I really resent Netflix. Because if that would have been my son, that he slashed across the face with some glass or whatever, I would have hated that bloke for being on your programme. Because you, what you're doing is you're promoting it. Mm. Um, and I think it's highly immoral and I well think I will tell you I will tell you one thing Erica Erica I will tell you one thing genuinely yeah. he didn't like the beating I gave him he didn't like Good. it he didn't I like it you could you. see that he didn't like and it and I'm glad that you're honest and you can say what you well I'd never really I'd never met him yeah. I didn't watch it I, I just literally I think it's very symbolic though of, of like a generation of men because I do think that we we've we've come to this funny uh, crossroads where if you if you if you're rich then you're successful and and mm. i don't think that that i don't think that that's netflix's fault i think that that's the andrew tate culture and that's the way it is and i'm just intrigued to see yeah, can i ask you this can, sorry sorry erica erica give me a second Let, erica give me a second let me ask you danielle i mean if your son's turned up like that, oh, I've got a Lamborghini because I'm a life coach, 8,000 people have bought my worthless piece of paper, would you be proud of that? Well, that's the point I'm making. No, I know that. I, I personally, no, I wouldn't be proud of the fact that it injured someone. But, but no, again, but I mean the actual the fact job. That he's, took, he's, he's done his punishment. Do we punish people forever? Do people make mistakes? Oh, no, no. Can, so, I, can, I, be totally, can I be totally honest with everybody? I think his business, which, by the way, I'm not going to accuse of being fraudulent, but what I will say is deeply dubious in terms of... Well, there's a of lot of people no, no, doing that kind of thing but, but, who but, haven't but, got but, the, the balls to he's, sit there and he's, address he's, our questions. But he's you don't realise that. He compared his training course to a university in in my way in my view in a quite dishonest way and and i personally think that whilst what he did to that one individual was very very bad i think to have taken the money of eight thousand people to have sold that dream to them i think it potentially is far worse because it's more damaging to eight thousand people thank you erica from bristol you've um yeah We'll do that, but it was an interesting call. Um, if you want to give us a call, please do. It's 0344 You can text the word TALK and your message and send it to 87 Travel 2 All your calls and texts are charged at your standard network rate. We'll be back in just a sec. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime, but there's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. 
this is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. So. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational discussion You can't, discussion can you? you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. This is the late night phone in with Andre Walker and Danielle Nichols. And I'm sorry, no matter how many times we go, the producers say to us and we say to ourselves, let's move on. We're still arguing about it. We still, We're just still arguing about it. We still We're are. We're still arguing about it. <laughs> and, 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 and honestly, normally in this show, we just take calls all the way through. I honestly didn't want necessarily to have a guest. You were so right to bring him on because I've never thought so much about one individual in my life. <laughs> um, I mean, it was just, it was interesting because, do you know the thing about somebody like that? When you meet somebody like that, when you talk to somebody like that, and it's even more than Mizzy, it, you actually just want to spend an hour just thinking about what you think about them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, Mizzy apparently went to prison this week, didn't he? Uh, is that right? Oh, do you know? Do you know something? Do you know something? I actually, I really think that Mizzy is a symptom of the failure of the education system in this country. How can somebody with that much talent end up making no money on TikTok, running into people's houses? It's a disgrace. Do you know what I would do? But this is what I mean. This is where I think that we've personally gone a little bit mad because everything is about, like you're saying, about the influencer and the the life coach and all that. It's all about like uh, this this not real fame and money, 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 money. And that's that's what's but being you know, forced do you, do down you know our said, children's Do you know what I said to somebody the other day and they were quite shocked? I said, I don't want to be a TV presenter, I don't want to be a radio presenter, I don't care. What I like is debating and I like issues and this is a job that does it. These people who... Do you know Elton John? I mean, I wouldn't compare myself to Elton John, obviously. I mean, I'm fat and going a bit bald but uh, and a bit ginger. But, but you know, <laughs> do you know what Elton John once said? He Go said, on. the price I pay for doing the job I want is I have to be an international rock star. So what he's interested in is playing the piano and doing music. He's not interested in the rest of it. Oh, life coach this. So, I mean, people who take photos of themselves eating their dinner so that other people can ogle at it, I think it's Pathetic. I don't like people who take photos of the food. No, I'll agree with that. But I, I, I'm good I mean, at talking. I think, so I, th I think, as you know, I prefer to eat food than look at it. Right, let's go back to our quick fire calls. If you want to call us, it's 0344-499-1000. We'll give you a minute. We're not being rude, but we will go after a minute and see if we can get through these calls. You can also talk, test... You can also text the word TALK and your message to 8722 and uh, your calls and your texts are all st charged at your standard network rate. Put my teeth back in tonight. There we go. <laughs> oh, we've um, got a nice text there. No, that is not a nice text. It, it is. says, Andre, you look like a trans puppet tonight. Has Daniel got a hand... I'm not reading that out. What? Has Daniel got a hand... Uh, no, no, don't read that out. OK. There's a nice one in the middle. Danielle, you're looking beautiful as always, but but Andre, you're looking much more dapper this week than you did last right. week. Rachel. And Rachel, Andre has somewhere to live tonight. Rachel, the reason I didn't look dapper last week is I was homeless. You know how you're sat there thinking, these two must be worth a fortune, right? I was homeless, right? And, and I was living out of a bag. I was living out of a bag. He was living out of a suitcase. I, I, I couldn't do anything. He was attacked anything. by I Jedward. Couldn't, I couldn't move. I, couldn't, I was living he out was of a bag. He was called Jedward's dad. It was an awful week for you last week. I mean, I mean, imagine, imagine the best thing that happened to you last week was being attacked by Jedward. <laughs> and that was the best thing that happened. We did do, we you did do a film premiere, which you was quite excited about. Well, you went to the film premiere with. Uh, yeah, I did. You know, surprised you made our life. But uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's go to Chris in Ipswich. Chris, you've got a minute. You're on Talk TV. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, so, just a quickie, I was just watching that little thug that was on the telly. Go I'd on. I'd like to know, he, he, she's probably affected. 
Oh, we're losing Chris, Chris, you, Chris. Chris, Chris, we've had a tech fault. We're going to come back to you because it sounds like you were making a good point. Our producer will fix that. Alan, you've got a minute. You're on Talk TV. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Danielle. Hi. I didn't call you Lizzie this time. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make a point about what the Irish Prime Minister said in his speech uh, that he gave con uh, condemning the Irish people for the, the way that they... Um, he. He didn't condemn the guy who did the attack, which was absolutely horrendous. He attacked his own people, and he should have been defending the Irish people rather than defending the guy that did the attack. Yeah, but Alan, but Alan, very quickly, that Alan, very quickly, that. Alan, very quickly, I have a lot of sympathy for those people who were supporting the, uh, the veterans at the Cenotaph. I've got a lot of sympathy for people in Dublin, but they are also committing criminal acts. How do you balance that? Well, and, and also the press and things call them far right. Well, how do they know they're far right? Do they speak to every single one of them mm. to know that they're far right? OK, uh, thank you Just so much, like Alan. A general sweeping in. Chris, in Ipswich, I think we've had another go. You've got a minute. Go for it. Chris, in Ipswich, we've had another Hi. go. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hello there. Hello, you two. Good. I would just, want to, just want to say something about that little thug that was on earlier on. He, he's a life coach. He's affected someone's life. Then he said he tried to contact the person that he, he attacked. Did he actually... Uh, it'd be interested to know if he actually offered him some money as a payback, considering he's made a million or whatever it is, out, so much money out of being a little thug. Mm. That's a good point. I'll tell yeah. you what we should say. I'm very happy for us to contact him and say he he claims to have made what twenty five million pounds. Is he claims? I think so, yeah. Okay, so I think we will contact him, Chris, and ask him to send a check for a million pounds to his victim <laughs> and see what happens. See Chris, is. don't hold your breath. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> um, right, are we going to Na Naz in London? Naz in London. Hi, Naz. Hi. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Uh, I want to just to say about this man, he was saying his name's Kane. Yes. What's happening today? Yeah. yeah. I agree because Jesus Christ is coming soon. We should everyone repent in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, Naz, have you got any further thoughts on his second coming? He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Everyone should repent. Do we know when? Repent means, repent means should everyone ready for Jesus to come in second. So Make sure you've got your best underwear on, soon. as my mum would say. <laughs> what if you've got mm -hmm. nothing to repent, Nas? Because we should be ready for Jesus to come soon. You should be clean yourself. Be ready for him. Okay. Naz, nice, thank you so much. Thanks, nice, thank you. I'll tell you what I find interesting. Look, I, I'm a religious person. I, I'm a Christian. I find it, it's quite interesting, which whatever question you ask, they always give you the answer they were hoping to give anyway. Yeah, right? it doesn't so if, matter. You, if you'd literally asked her what, what dress she's wearing, she'd have answered, she'd have said, Jesus repent is for Jesus. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but that's not a legitimate <laughs> answer. The answer was blue. Okay. <laughs> Daniel in Leeds. Hi, Daniel. You're on Talk TV. You all right? How you doing, Andre? How you doing, Andre? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. Um, the question I want to ask is, 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 is subject close to me, is, is trans ideology. You know what I mean? It's like, how, how far is that getting pushed on our kids? Okay. How far is it being how, pushed? What, what do you think, Daniel? Well, I mean, personally, I mean, it's like, if, if, if someone said, like, oh, like, going to school... As a parent, you should have a choice to what what your children should learn. Yeah. Dan, Daniel, here's, here's my concern, right? So, first of all, I'm with you. You know I'm with you. But but equally... Oh, I, know, I know you're with me, Andre, yeah. But, but equally, there has to be standards in schooling. There has to be a, a national curriculum uh, that, that sets certain, uh, certain parameters for what's taught in schools. How, how do we balance... Uh, the idea that you have to have individual choice about what your children learn with also having minimum standards? Well, in terms of having a choice of what your children learn, I mean, to be honest with yourself, when I went to school, and I'm pretty sure when you went to school, mm. like, the idea of wearing dresses wasn't pushed on you. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it, 
he seemed he seemed to be. When I when I when I went to school when I went to school when I went to school the subject of trans homosexuality lesbianism and the full spectrum of all that ideology was covered by the following statement an anus was not designed for a penis and that that completed the totality <laughs> that wasn't that what he said at my school that completed thank you daniel from Lee. <laughs> and that and that completes that lesson <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> do we do we have time for another call or should we go to the break okay it's time for another call yeah all right it's andy in cumbria hi andy, andy. Hi, good evening, folks. How are you doing? Good evening. Good. Fantastic. How are you? I'm all right. I just thought I'd, uh, you know, this all all we have on the TV is uh, various protests here and there, and, and we've all grown up with it. You know, I was born in the '60s and we've seen it all. But if you look at the standard of the banners, the banners people have these days that just cheaply printed and. If you go back to when people actually believed in things, they used to sit round and talk and sew a banner for their union, for their band, for these things. Yet all these people that have all this voice, there is no, there's no sign of any cohesion in, in those groups that they've got together and made something lovely to put their message across. And that's just, just an observation uh, of, of watching 50 years of protest. So... I've just thought I'd leave that with you. Yeah, I know, and the banners just up all use are all made out of plastic, which is I, I, super I, interesting. I, 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 I think I think we've exchanged real happiness for pretending to be happy. You know, this this Instagram this and social media that we all talk about how life is wonderful, but I think actually in many respects life isn't wonderful for more people. We're gonna be continuing to take your calls straight after this. <laughs> This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast ah, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. 
Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? Use? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. This is Andre Walker. No, no, you've not done it right. OK, I'm Danielle Nichols. This is the amazing, talented, highly opinionated Andre Walker. Beautiful. Who's managed to upset the guest that I managed to get in the show <laughs> earlier this evening, and now he's going to listen, wait for you no. outside with lethal injection. No, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, there's a delineation. Women are good at some things, oh! and men are good at others. No, I'm not joking. I'm not being sexist. You're good at booking guests. I'm good at offending them. Yeah, you're that's good true. at driving to par uh, uh, You're good at driving home from parties. I'm good at driving to parties. Okay. Right? It's, it, oh that's wow. It works. Okay. It works. Yeah. Anyway, this also, is. Also, no, no. Shut up. Tell, t tell them about my house. Oh. No, I'm... just tell them about my so house. So I'm staying at Andre's house tonight. So she, she's struggling, obviously. <laughs> uh, no, I left it too late to book my hotel, and then I knew that he, did, he had his was, new that's house. That's what she was claiming. OK, but, she wanted, but I did. She wanted to... I'll book next week, trust me. No, I'm joking. And, uh, yeah, so I've ended up staying with Andre this weekend, and um, do you know what? I was. He told me that it was all boxes and that it was all a bit of a tip, and when I walked in, it was actually... It's very bachelor pad. Let me just put this way. Right, this, this, will, this will give you a summary of Andre's house. His... Coffee table turns into a casino. <laughs> My coffee table, if you take the top off. If you take the lid off his coffee table, there's a... <laughs> there's a roulette <laughs> wheel inside. <laughs> there's a roulette wheel and loads of packs of cards and chips. So if we get back tonight and we decide we want to play some roulette... <laughs> she also said, is that a real gun? And I said, it's an air pistol, it's entirely legal. He's got, he had a gun in the drawer and I did, he kind of went, ha, ha, look at this. And I thought, oh! No, no, by the way, just to be clear before people panic, saying, ha, look at this when it's an air pistol <laughs> is entirely legal. <laughs> I don't want the armed response unit to come round and invade it my property. It was an air pistol. Well, th this is, do you know, this is like within, what, 10 minutes of me putting up my blow-up bed? <laughs> In the lounge, like she wasn't was allowed in the bedroom. I was a little bit nervous, and he, he hasn't shown me round because he said it's that much of a tip. Right. You can't no, even no, go in the bedroom. No, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you it's what. Very lovely though. She, she contacted it's me than yesterday. I thought it was going to be. She got. It's very nice. <laughs> Elec you didn't mention the electric gate. Oh, and right. he's got electric gate. <laughs> anyway, so so she says to me. Uh, hello, Andre. I can't. I can't find anywhere to stay <laughs> this, this weekend. So I said. So she went. Can no, I stay? No, had said last weekend. If you ever need anywhere to stay. Yeah, but I didn't mean it. Okay. I didn't. People just say oh, that. Okay. I didn't actually mean it. Then when you went, all right, can I You've stay? You've been saying it for more than a year, but you didn't but mean it. Of course, I didn't mean it. Oh, That's okay. what people say. Okay. Stay at mine any time. Don't. Um, <laughs> But then, but you know, what happened? Oh, again, she, she, she went, the gun. No, I, I, now I want you, as the viewers and listeners, to think about this. When she said to me, Andre, you said the house was full of boxes, but when I went into your hall, your lounge, your kitchen, and your bathroom. bathroom, there were no boxes in it. Now, what she failed to recognise was there are further rooms in the house, and all we'd done was just move the boxes. Anyway, but anyway. But it was all very tidy and lovely, and he's got one of these, like, desks that looks like it should be in a movie, you know, with, like, the green lamp on it. You know what I mean, don't you? He's got, like, like this dark it's my, it's my Indonesian desk, hardwood it's, campaign desk. It's very lovely, and your house is very lovely, and thank you for letting me stay. It, it is better than yours, so don't get to don't get i mean we've put her in the uh, put her in the lounge don't want her to get too comfortable in one of the best because she'll, she'll be here all the time don't worry about it i will be first thing in the morning i will be in my car back into my she said to me andre she said andre um in the morning how do i operate the electric gate yeah. i i will tell you something i love this new job when i worked at the house of commons and had no money nobody ever said to me andre how do i operate your electric gate do you know what, do you know what makes me laugh the most thing that makes me laugh about that place go on is when I get Asda to do my delivery. Do you know what? <laughs> There's you know nobody what? on that street. Do you know what I loved as well? As he's walking in, he goes, oh, this is a neighbour that we haven't met yet. 
Now they think I'm his wife. <laughs> they were like, oh, nice to meet you both. And he didn't correct them. He just, they just left it that we were husband the bit, the and bit, wife. The bit she didn't explain was, with her rollers and no makeup, oh. I, I was keen to disassociate. <gasps> if I'm being... oh. Never, that's the rudest thing I've ever said. It to you. is. It is. I do. I do look terrible in rollers and no makeup. I'll give you that. Although we went to the pub with your rollers and makeup, it's a phone-in show. So it's I'm not bothered. To... And I think someone might have recognised us across the way, but I didn't want to say anything. But yeah, <laughs> they're going. They're going. Oh, that Andre looks better in real life. She's a dog. She, <laughs> <laughs> she needs a bit of makeup on. Is what they were saying. Right to the calls. We've got John in North Wales. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, Hi. Um, how are you? Hello. Hello, um, Danielle. Um, good evening, all day. And I've almost forgotten what I was going to talk about, but I was just, um, I was just really didn't listen to the last uh, bit of the uh, the guests you had on, but heard a little bit of it. Okay. And I thought, well, right, I thought that, that them people, uh, to be honest, they're a nonsense, mm. in my opinion. Um, they've done wrong in life and then they gain from what they've done wrong. Um, you know, and John, Johnny, not Johnny, it's not, John, it's not an argument, and you know where I stand on this. It's not an argument. This man has set up a training company. He believes it's benefiting people. I believe, by the way, it's benefited some people, but that he isn't strong enough on looking after people who are vulnerable. But, you know, is there no argument for saying that he deserved a second chance? No, uh, there is. Everybody deserves a second chance. But I think probably... My argument, really, or my sort of view on it, is when I was 16, I, came, I had a hard life when I was young. You know, we all did in them days, in the 70s. I'm 65. Mm. And I went and joined the army yeah. um, as a junior. Went to the junior parachute company um, with a friend. And we, we, um, we took a day off school to join... Um, when we got back to school, we got caned for taking that day off to go oh. across to Liverpool okay. from Birkenhead. Right, this is what I'm trying to just give you a little insight mm. to how life was was tough, you know? Mm. My mother, we were brought up tough, but we always had food and we, you know, um, we didn't have any modern, uh, any of these modern comforts, but we knew right and wrong. And um, we were not in, we were not uh, angels, but we did grow up in the in the sort of okay, John, 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 John. Where the doors would be left open, and if you were walking down the street and uh, a neighbour said, "Go and run on the," but, but John, very quickly, John, very quickly, because we're only giving people a minute apiece. I just want to ask you one. I, I want to ask you one very simple question. One very simple question. Do you think? Uh, you know, you've served this country, you've been in the military, life was hard in the 70s, we want life to get better. Do you think that young people are benefiting from all this garbage that is saying that you can have a happy life by watching social influencers? No, no, they are not. And I've got a 21-year-old daughter and a big gap. I've got a 30-year-old son. I'm, I'm with those a lot. You know, my wife passed away a few years, you know, young, but... Um, they are not. This life now, I think they just say one little thing, so I really do enjoy listening. I sometimes have a good laugh and whatever, oh, and I don't God. know what to say, but I absolutely love to listen to somebody like Ken from London. Right. Okay. David from Northern Ireland. And I made them notes because they have a, they, they, they actually should be tolerated. They shouldn't be laughter and we should be able to sort of um in enjoy John John say. John that's John yeah. that's your, that's your time up thank I, you John I'm, I'm going to make one thing clear about about Christians about John, uh, sorry, Ken and David. Let me tell you, God is not a dirty word on any show that I will do. No. But 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 I'm equally, a Christian. but but equally, but equally, I think that more people are going to have sympathy with them than they're going to have sympathy with the just stop oil people outside, even though they're not necessarily evangelicals. Can I just really quickly read this text message? Hi, Daniel and Andre. Just just a reminder: there are only 
20 shopping days until Danielle's birthday, which is on Saturday, December the 16th, if I remember rightly, from Gareth in Wales. That's a bit stalkery, but yeah. It's my mother's birthday. <laughs> on the 16th mm. of December? Mm. Genius is a born on the 16th of December. So there you go. You can there you go. I've reminded you of when my birthday. Well, I mean, I'll be more. You can buy I'm, me a beautiful I'll be, present. I'll be more bothered about my dead mother's birthday than I will be about you. Well, you'll remember <laughs> me birthday though. Well, not for good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's also my grandmother's anniversary. Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Given my mother's died and the 16th is my grandmother's anniversary, I'll think my top priority today is to worry about Danielle. By the way, by yeah, so am I going to be on the show? on my birthday. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, that'll be fun. Uh, you're going to have to make a big fuss of me, you know. <laughs> I must congratulate the star of this show for being so brilliant and putting up with Andre. That's a text message you've just had. <laughs> oh. Right. Anne is in Lee. Anne, Anne give us a minute. Uh, you're on Talk TV. Hi there, guys. Hi, Anne. Hi. I'm just ringing about the people of this country, why don't we all stand up and protest about this, well, all the governments that bring in these rules, whether you agree with it or not, no smoking, what you eat, what you do. Oh, they just love telling us what to do, don't they? Because Anne? I'll tell you, and the reason, because we're too busy having the jobs that pay for the government that do this stupidity. Exactly. You know, why would they care whether we die or not from smoking or drinking? I, this is a very interesting, and we could probably do all night on this hand, but I completely agree, and I felt the same during COVID. Like, this is our body. We can make our own choices about the, th the, the situations we put ourselves in. Like, when did it become uh, the, the government's business to this to to keep us safe in that respect I, I, like let us make our own decisions i personally think that we have gone from a society where we are governed to being ruled i'm continually now being told how to live my life in the old days you would prohibit you know those things that were damaging to society murder theft uh, burglary whatever it is now you're starting to prohibit oh i think you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that you know, right. I, I think it's I mean, nonsense it's all protest about other things why don't we as a country stand up and say look you work for us you know you're supposed to look after us and all they do is lie but none of them will admit it <laughs> they're, well, uh, they're not. They're not bothered. They're not bothered about doing the actual job. They're bothered about being seen to do the job. I used to work in the House of Commons. I will tell you, it is not full of bad people. You know, politicians are not evil. The problem is the whole system has become misguided. Where, where you know, you were taught. I, I spoke to a very nice. I spoke to a very nice chap once. We went to this meeting. I'm going to have to anonymise this, Danielle, mm -hmm. in order not to embarrass people. We went to this meeting that was a campaign group to get a new motorway bypass. And all the politicians stood up and went, yeah, we're supporting you. We want this motorway bypass. It's going to be great. And all the public were cheering. And when we went backstage, all of them said, right, how are we going to drop this? Because obviously yeah. we, we can't do it. And, and I said, and to be fair, the boss that I worked for said, no, no. When we stood up and said we wanted the bypass, we were telling the truth. Mm. They went, you what? We thought this yeah. was just for the public. That's right. But, you know, I just think... Um, you know, why are they telling us what to do? Uh, Anne, Anne, I completely agree. I'm going to have to say thank you okay. very much, but I do agree with Danielle, what you're saying. Danielle, Go it's on. my fault. Let's be disciplined with one minute apiece. I know, you're Barbara, rubbish. Barbara, you've got a minute and we're going to be strict now. Barbara, go for it. Oh, hi, Andre. Hi, hi, Barbara, how are hi. you? Um, I just missed um, James before about Teddy's. Um, in the early 50s, I was... I was very young, and um, I, I had uh, three teddy bears, and I used to love Goldilocks story. So I had a, a daddy, a daddy bear, a mummy bear, and a little baby bear. Yeah, and I still do that now. I always have a little family of bears or bunnies or whatever I've yeah. you know been given, and um, I, I, it's it's just one of those things. I've been grown up with. Yeah. The, you know, There's the nothing wrong with that. Mummy bear, daddy bear, baby bear. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I mean, disgusted. I've been called all of them. I'm, dis 
Well, <laughs> I'm just disgusted with um, the way these... Um, uh, this, um, this, uh... Barbara, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank She's you, referring to an earlier discussion about transgendered bears, which, believe me, apparently are a thing. Hassan is in Blackburn. Hassan, you're on Talk TV. <laughs> Hi there, Andre. My question is about banking systems of the UK. Mm. Um, the question is, they are trying to get rid of the cash from um, our kind of uh, banking system. So yeah. the question is, is cash king or do banks control our lives? That's the question. I think well, they're really well, trying well, to, first, well, they? well, first of all, I'm extremely concerned about something called fractional reserve banking, which means that when you put a pound into a bank, uh, they can loan up to eight, ten, twenty pounds by literally pressing a button and creating that money. We should not allow banks to create money. But let me tell you something else. The reason that cash is king is this. And Hassan, I suspect... I don't mean to be funny, but I know Blackburn fairly well. Uh, the Asian community in Blackburn is very small business focused. I don't know what you do for a job, but it's very small business focused. But every, if we get rid of cash, people talk about whether that is a benefit to the tax man, and it is. But actually, you're paying 1% of your entire earnings on everything to a credit card company. And for many small businesses, you know, taxi businesses, restaurant businesses, takeaway businesses, that's a major problem. I think we need to defend cash because I don't want to put the power in the hands of the banking sector. Is that helpful? It is helpful. I've still, I've still got one more question mm. for you. Okay. The question is, do the banks control our lives by taking away cash? Yes. Yeah, it does. It's a way of uh, having with, more with, control. With, without yeah. a doubt, Hassan. 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, and, and by the thank way, you, by Hassan. the way, by the way, this is a major concern to small businesses. Uh, but let's move on. Matthew is in Cheshire. Matthew, you're on Talk TV. You've got a minute. Um, I just wanted to say how great it is to see two people from Greater Manchester on TV at the same time, and congratulate Andre for the day he dealt with um, the bad boy with the double-barrelled name earlier on. <laughs> well, I, I, I will tell you something, Matthew, and thank you. We will ring you off on that because you've had your made your comment, but I will tell you something. This channel is absolutely committed to not being like everybody else, full of posh people. <laughs> uh, it's, um, Certainly not if I'm here, is it? I mean, I, I went to private school and, He's and, posh. and I have some fairly good A levels, but I mean, not, not so much her. But, um, but, but, no, I'm not joking. But actually, do you know something? We reflect this country and we stand by this country and we support this country. Thank you so much, Matthew. Roger is in Greater Manchester. Roger, you've got a minute. You're on Talk TV. Uh, your caller from Liam, carrying on from what she said. Um, she spoke about, you were saying about people, um, you were saying about with control and sort of uh, misguided. Uh, politicians um, and she, your, your caller said why don't uh, people stand up well I think people become apathetic yeah mm. I think that's right but look but Roger given that you actually have to go to work for a living rather than hang around on a trust fund uh, campaigning for just stop oil how do you have the time and the <laughs> inclination to do it <laughs> who said I'm involved in just stop oil <laughs> no 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 I'm sorry so you miss you misheard me Roger what I'm saying is given that you have to have an actual job rather yep. than those people who have the time to do Just Stop Oil, you don't have the time to protest. You know, you, you, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I make jokes. I make jokes, all the schools are crap. You don't have time to do it. <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, on the elements of control, Big Brother and all that, um, mm. the government, uh, smart meters, um, you know, do you know where they can actually limit people's electricity at peak times? Ah, uh, well, they're near they, the they, 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 Roger, Roger, they can do that, and I have to say, I think the smart metering system is insane. I think what we should do is frack Lancashire. Uh, <laughs> Lewis is in... Hay I'm from Lancashire. <laughs> Lewis is in Haywards Heath. Lewis, you got a minute? I don't agree. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. Um, I mean, I've just up oil, they've affected my life in so many ways. I mean, it, I, you know, in terms of me, I was taking my son to the hospital, and, and, and they got in the way, and that took 25 minutes. It should have taken 15 it's, it, it, it's not good enough. Um, I mean, they're, again, as you said, th they're on trust fund. They have no idea what the real world is in terms of working and things. And, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's making my life a misery. And I'm sure it is with many others as well. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do as well. I mean, can you...
Enlighten me on that as well, because... Uh, look, uh, look, 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 Lewis, I, I'm not 100% convinced that you're father, but, you know, you can call up and say anything you want. But, um, but look, for, for, from my perspective, there needs to be a balance on protest. And, and, and ultimately, if the proposition you put forward was correct, that to go to a yep. normal hospital appointment you might be inconvenienced by 10 minutes, then OK, I, I, don't, I don't know whether that's bad or good. But what annoys me is this central concept that people are so selfish that they will not give democracy a chance because it's the me, me, me culture. I think what we saw earlier with the life coach was somebody who's obsessed with me and not with us. Lewis, continue. He's gone. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are some people who phone up in order to josh with us. I don't know if Lewis was one of them, but he just, he just sounded a bit young to be a father. OK, uh, we're going to take more of your calls straight after this. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are Nothing you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. And send it to 87 treble 2. That's 87 treble 2. Your calls will be charged at your standard network rate, as will with your text messages. So one, so one of my favourite people that call in, because obviously this, we, we have regular customers, is, <laughs> is Sean in Durham. I, I, I Sean don't, really likes you, doesn't he? I, I can't work he always out... He writes in capitals like he's I, shouting. I can't work out whether he really likes me or really likes to hate me. But either way, uh, last, last week we had an argument about toshers, right? A tosher is somebody who goes through... Through a, a sewer in order to collect uh, valuables that have been yeah, accidentally. You thrown. really enjoyed calling him a tosher. No, didn't I didn't you? call him a tosher. I made he was going, he was going, listen, mate, under Thatcher, people used to have to go down the sewers for a pound an hour. I said, Do you actually say that people were toshers? Don't call me a tosser. I didn't call you a tosser. I was saying that they were called toshers. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, Sean has said, just stop oil, Andre, from shot. Just stop oily Andre. Oily Andre, yeah. <laughs> yeah. From Sean the Sheep yeah. from Cassie. He also said, he also said, now, by the way, Sean, you've got to listen to what I said. He said, you are very wrong, Andre. Tory MPs are all evil, lol. Now, actually, I didn't say that Conservatives were good in the House of Commons. I said all of the people that work in the House of Commons are generally good. That's Labour, Conservative, SNP, Ply Cymru, the lot. I don't agree with all of them. And they Look, might be... you've brought me into a world where now I'm in politics because I'm going to a lunch, apparently, with... Um, what, Theresa James, May. Theresa May and James Cleverly. <laughs> so, I do realise that it, it is... They are good people. No, no, no. Let's just be clear what exactly happened. I don't know why I couldn't this make, is that. I couldn't make it to a dinner because I, I couldn't make it to a dinner because I was busy. You sat next to a gazillionaire who I would have sat next to because it was my seat. And then that gazillionaire went, let me invite you to lots of very expensive events. Now, I mean, she, she only booked that seat because she thought I was going to be sat there. Well, don't know what to say. She liked although, me. although I will admit, she was glad I, I will, was I will, there. I, I, I will give you one thing, Danielle. Go on. I don't think she'd have taken me to Harrods for a makeover. No, I, because well, because she I'm might too, have done, you might too have perfect. It. <laughs> You're not too perfect as you are. Can I ask you another question? Why is there no cosmetics or anything in your bathroom? Have you not moved in that much? Because I'm a man. There's no soap or it. There's literally shower gel. That is it. I had to wash my hands with shower gel. Do you know, anyway, do you know, let's no, go Do you know what the actual reason is? Go on. Do you know the actual reason is? Do you know that big mirror on the oh, wall? Oh, yeah. If you pull it back, it opens into a cupboard. Oh, is it all tucked away? That's very good of you. Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know what my producer, it? do you know what my producer always says? As I, my producer always says, I see the TV money's coming through. Anyway, <laughs> anyway Billy is in Liverpool. Billy, you've got a minute, you're on talk TV. Hi, Billy. Call on, Remember, Billy. of course, we're in our last yeah. half hour. If you want to call us, it's 03 double four four double nine one thousand. Uh So, Billy, you've got a minute. Hi. Hey, say again, please. Sorry, say again, please. Pardon? Can you say that again, please? Sorry? Can you say that again? Please? Can we say that again, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It was a double cheese and tomato with ham and pineapple, and it was to, to be delivered in the Toxteth area. Oh. Yeah, so, so, so you're through to Pizza uh. Hut? Yeah, so so we, we 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 can't quite hear you, sir. But you ordered two pizzas. No, with... no you're making no, me hungry. And, no, no, we never. No, I never. No, oh, two pizzas yes. with with ham and tomato on hungry. one of them, and iron filings on the other. Can you just give us your card number and your delivery address? All right, come on, I'll drop to you. So it was three pizzas, what, two Billy? curries, a couple of naan breads, and a chow mein. Oh, I do a naan bread right now. Get Bi off. Billy, what are you doing? Get off. What is going on with Billy's phone? Hey, listen, you know what it all is? I'm a pensioner, and I still work, and there's some money. In the words of Partridge, that was just a noise. What did okay. he say? I, so, I know he said I'm to, a pensioner, but I couldn't hear no, anything. To, no, to be fair, to be fair, I don't want to be rude. That was clearly a line problem. I think that I was think a tech, was. tech fault on our part. Yeah, we I do apologise. Sorry Sean, about that, Billy. We Sean, couldn't hear you properly. B Billy, I thought you were taking the mic. Apparently it is a technical fault on our side. Oh, we couldn't hear. I do apologise. I, I do, I do apologise. hear anything at all. Um, who, who have we got next? <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll DHL you an iPad to get you on Zoom. And if you believe that, you believe. OK, so Sean is in lead. Sean, you're on Talk TV. Andre, Danielle, how are you doing? Hi, how are you, Sean? We're good, thank you. Chipper. Oh, not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. Um, my question is, uh, thoughts, that is a proud dog owner, uh, thoughts on the potential ban on the XO bullies? What do you think? Well, I don't want it to happen. Uh, Sean, Sean, can I give you my answer? It's generally yeah. said in most political interviews that the worst piece of legislation in the history of this country was the Dangerous Dogs Act, which took no account of sensible owners, no account of the, 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 the personality of the dog. It simply made breeds illegal. Um, it was a response at the time to dogs that were considered weapon dogs and dangerous. Uh, instinctively, Sean, 
I'm nervous about extending the Dangerous Dogs Act, given that A, I'm not a dog owner, but B, it is famously cited in every academic textbook as the worst piece of legislation ever. And, and by the way, that's a high bar and includes when Tony Blair made it illegal to kill people with nuclear explosions, which was a particularly stupid piece of legislation. Well, to be fair, Andre, there's a counterpoint, which what makes me nervous is um, your waistcoat. It's <laughs> awfully fruity. I like you, Sean. You've got a fruity it's, it's, waistcoat. It's, it's, it's very strong. You know what I mean? It's a bit strong for one o'clock in the morning. Uh, I so mean, I mean uh, no, no, no. Stay on, Sean. Stay on. Stay on. We're not cutting you off after a minute. Let me tell you something, you obnoxious shit, right? <laughs> I, I, I have answered your question about XL bullies. You phoned me up. No, no, I'm, no, stay on. Don't hang up. Stay on. Yeah, I'm not. I'm He's not, not scared of you. Sean ain't scared. You phoned me up. You phoned me up, drunk or sober, you lot. You phoned me up, drunk or sober. Ask me any question. I have answered questions on well, CRB Andre, checks. I've answered questions on dangerous Yeah, but he wanted to know why your waistcoat's so free. And your response to me, your, do you know, do you know something, Sean? I spend not hours, but days watching documentaries in order to ensure that whatever you phone me up about, I can talk about. And I answered... <laughs> Given I've never owned a dog, I gave you details on the Dangerous Dogs Act. It's 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 extension. It's well, and you, it's it's oh no! Shut up! Sean, shut, shut, shut up! Like, shut up! I I have I've sat dog. here. I've sat here, and the best you can say is about my waistcoat. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to take my waistcoat off right now. Please don't. You're you going to suffer the consequences. No, don't. Right no, don't. No. Oh, no. OK. Uh, we've got a lovely message here just while Andre undresses for Sean. It's all very odd. Um, gosh, you look gorgeous tonight. Those eyes, those amazing lips, those incredible cheeks. I want to kiss you. What? So amazing. Do you want me to read this out? So amazingly stunning. It's just untrue. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, and by the way, Danielle doesn't look too bad either from Mark in Norwich. Oh, no, he's taking... No, don't. Oh, what? It's like Dago. It's like a Dago. He's got a Dago chair. You need to stop going on that sunbed. <laughs> what is going on? Sean, look what you've started now. Is that, is that what you want? Is that what you want? No from, one wants Is that what that. you want from Saturday night telly? No is this one what, wants that. Do, do you want the old Andre? Gosh, I look so tan next to you. <laughs> I mean, if that's your only problem with, with what's going on now, then you've got some period. Uh, Claire's in what, Birmingham. What do, Hi, Claire, can you see what's going on in the studio? I'm going to have to, clip, wanna, oh, have to clip no. the microphone to you. Oh, oh no. No, clip it, clip it to your hairs. Clip it to your hairy chest. Claire, can you see? Yeah, go on. I can see, I can <gasps> see. It's yeah. I mean, that's a television scary. first, isn't it? A dubious one, but... Is it hurting? It was actually rather pleasant. It's, it's hurting my eyes. It's hurting Claire's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's because he's still so bright. Why is it's, he so it's white? It's so bright. It's so bright. <laughs> Claire, what, I bet she wanted to talk I about something I serious. Just, what do you want to talk believe, about, Claire? I've just, I've just called up tonight just to have a serious conversation just and now... I know. Go on, try and have a sit. Oh, gosh, his nipples are so pink. His What's nipples, your serious? His nipples are so scared. <laughs> Well, everything in it. By, by the way, by the way, that, sorry, Claire. sorry, Claire, Claire, let's everything. just stop. Claire, let's just stop, because I think there are also radio listeners. And what I'm going to do, Danielle, is invite you to describe for the radio listeners <laughs> what has actually just okay, taken so place. OK, so for anyone listening on radio right now, Andre okay. has decided to remove the whole of his top half because Sean insulted I've his I've not just taken coat. off the top half. But you have, thank God. Um, so, he, but he's got, he's very white with a hairy chest. With, rub it. I have to Come say on, he's got just, some just rub it, just rub grey, it, just rub it. I don't want to. No, just rub it. I've got a grey chest. No. Oh, got some grey yeah. hairs she, on What there. makes me laugh is she's married to a footballer and she has to sit next to this. <laughs> Um, also, yeah. that so and thing. for the radio <laughs> listeners, he's managed to clip the microphone to his super, super hairy chest. Claire, <laughs> on, what was your serious thing you wanted to say? Go for it no, anyway. I'm going to try and be serious, okay. but it was quite serious. So all I wanted to say was, from a woke point of view, a serious woke point of view, I have been brought up in the military. Right. I've lived around the world for the best part of... All of my, like, primary school, like, secondary school, 
and I've moved on. And we've moved on every three years, and I've moved on. And when I hear people say about people in schooling that have to deal with their mental health, blah, 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 I had to move all of my friends every three years of my uh, career at school and my schooling, and I never had to... And it never affected you? Never affected me. And I've, I have kind of grown up with lots of different people and I've moved on. And when I hear now that people have... It's affecting their schooling and it's their mental health, I'm not doubting a lot of it because of COVID. I understand that, that yes. I had a thing. But equally, I've had lots of great friends. I've met lots of different people and I'm through it. And I'm 45 now and I will bring my five-year-old daughter up in in the resp- same respect as, you Claire, know, how I... Claire, been thank you so me. much. Thank I think you, you've Claire. had your minute. Woody is Claire. in Glasgow. You look, the trees are looking beautiful, but Ash, hey, Andre, get your, hey, your tap back on me. But listen... <laughs> <laughs> He said, the two of you are looking beautiful, but please, Andre, put your Woody, top Woody, back on, Woody, mate. Woody, I just want to send a message to the detractors. When you write into this company saying, we see too much chest on the Andre and Danielle show, you'll now be telling the truth. Andre, you look good, but listen, you look good. But what I see... Uh, one oh, man, please, awesome paid for. Go back, can go back to Glasgow, right? It's Scotland, right? Uh, Danielle, you look beautiful, right? Uh, but I'm talking about the... The health minister in uh, uh, Scotland, right? He's put a, a a bill in to try and get his money right, and it's his kids that's uh, put all the money in, in the watching the for him, right? They're actually watching Rangers and Celtic, right? So it doesn't matter, right? But he's trying to uh, get one. Uh, I think it was one thousand. Two hundred pounds for the taxpayers in Scotland. Mm. That well, it's gone. a good point, Woody. It's a good point, and it's well made. Okay, um, I, I, th- I think I think we just have to compose ourselves. I think it's time now. for a break. But and I, are you going to put your clothes no, back I ju- on? No, I just want to repeat the comment. We have had so many messages saying. Andre and Danielle show. What ruined it for me was the amount of chest on show. Well, let me tell you that now this is the chestiest show in British television. Yes, because... Danielle, you have better boobs if you fancy taking it all off. We are watching in hope. <laughs> Do you know what makes me laugh about this? Do you know what makes me laugh? They're thinking to themselves, Mildred, I watch this, I watch this, because I wanted her to get a top off. Not yeah. him, not him, <laughs> not him. Uh, do you know, do you know, do you know, I just don't care. I can see you just don't care. Um, we David in Colrain is freckles. phoning. Here we go. Hi, David. Yeah. I look, uh, um, I want to ask you something. Yeah. What can you put, what, what, what can you put for? What, 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 what are your pork waps? Who you, who's your pork for? Who you pork for? Who do you pork for? Um, what, 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 what football? Manchester City. Who? Oh, who do I? Who does my my husband doesn't play football anymore? No, we, no are you are you Manchester City? Oh me! All oh, right, no, Man United. I'm sorry. Oh, you're Man City. So, so, yeah. so, so let, let me just ask you this, David. I'm not really that so, bothered. So, let, let me just ask you this because because I'm not being funny, David, and I just want you to explain the thought process. You are yeah. watching this show all the way through. You are currently looking on the TV at me and Danielle in this... Sh- shut up for a second. Put your clothes at on. At me head. and Danielle in this condition. And the number one thing that came to mind was what which football, football team? team does Danielle's husband play for? I would support, suggest to you... Support. I would suggest to you that is an unusual thought. I would have thought you'd have thought, why the hell's he got his top off? Just me. Uh, put the clothes... That, we're coming to a sport and I got a sport and I got... Nope. You, I come on the sword nigger, I'll get the sword nigger. You look like a, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be you back. Come on, come on. More next. We're here. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? 
We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. The amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? With you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. <laughs> but someone's just put <laughs> please put your top on you look like the guy from little britain <laughs> well i think there's a critical difference isn't that right front and back front and back well look what, what annoys me is come on it is the job of the woman to be judged on tv not the man what right. you've been you've been really sexist tonight with all this men and women thing that's not normally like you why are you being like that because because i'm sat here in only only and she's lying only a waistcoat have a look at that you know, mm. oh, oh, she, oh she's got a smile on her oh, face now no. she's got a smile on her face now. oh no i really she's don't i really now. don't oh my word oh i look forward to a monday when oh. you get the complaints i really do i really do there's You're a woman have to called, deal with claire there's a woman called <laughs> compliance claire she, she no longer gives me she no longer gives me the piece of paper she gives me the file <laughs> 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 there's a few offcom do you, know, do, you know what, do you know what we do? We spend we spend Monday going through them, the rest of the week apologising to everyone, then Saturday we're all clear to have another Back go! <laughs> Andre Danielle, tell you what, it takes balls for you, Andre, to take your top off on live TV. That's from Roger. Um, why are Andre's... Oh, I like this. Why are Andre's boobs bigger than Danielle's? That's from Tim in Porterdown. Now, Tim in Porterdown, I will tell you <laughs> that Danielle is popular with the dads, and I can assure you... That, her, that my boobs are not bigger. But I will tell you the best thing. The dads are going to be jealous for a moment. So sorry, mums, but the dads are going to be jealous. Right, as a result of the, the way the studio is technically created, in order to talk to the producers, I have to talk into her microphone. So, story. So, so what I have to do in order to talk to them, I have to press a button here. I won't press and it. And then speak to my and then, and then speak to the boobs. Yeah. I have seen more than you could ever dream of. Yes. And I can assure you that my moobs... I've got the moobs like Jabba. 
I've got the moobs like Jabba. <laughs> I've got the moobs like Jabba. I did actually strip like off in your house today, though, didn't I? And I loved it. <laughs> he did, and he will love and, and my house is fully rigged for CCTV. <laughs> and that is available on my new YouTube channel. It's called Danielle Booby 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 Wah. Uh, <laughs> dot com dot uk dot org dot whatever. Um, OK. Not uh, true. All lies. Uh, so <laughs> right, this is it. This is our last ten minutes of the show. You've, this is your last chance to call in. Oh three double four four double nine one thousand. Oh three double four four double nine one thousand. Or you can text the word talk and your message to eight seven treble two. Calls and texts all charged at your national standard. Dan Dan Danielle, rate. Danielle, I yes. just want to draw your attention to this oh, email. Oh, please don't draw my attention to anything more. Right, do, white, you remember, white do, you skin. do you remember? Do you remember when Legal emailed us and said? We need to be more conservatively dressed and more newsy. What? No, what? I think the words were more news, less moobs. No, it was, it was boobs. It was moobs. I think we failed on that. It one. was definitely uh, moobs. It wasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I mean, what makes me laugh is we're, we're attempting to continue this show as if it's sanity. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, Dean in Why Mansfield. Why have you got just no? <laughs> Dean in Mansfield, save me. Hi, Dean. How you going on? How you going on? Well, how do I look? How, how do I look? Andrew, <laughs> Danielle. My birthday is the same as Danielle. Birthday is the same as me? Yeah, mate, yeah. Rock on! Sagittarius. Yeah, uh, 60, yeah Sagittarius, 60 December. Andre, you've got the best man boobs ever going. Thank I'll you. I'll tell you that now. I've worked so well, many well, years. Stella Artois <laughs> sponsored them. <laughs> but can I just say a serious question? Yes. Why is everybody going on about this Gaza war and everything else, but everybody's forgot about the Ukrainian war? I will tell you something. It's, it a seems that it's, way. A, it's It's been a major concern, particularly for the Ukrainians. Just to reassure you, the United Kingdom government continues to send its aid know, to Ukraine. Know, One I of know. the things that has been really significant is the javelin missiles that we've supplied to the Ukrainians. I can't believe I'm sounding sensible. I know. We moment. can't be sensible with just... Just with you, yeah. And and Let's. so we we are continuing to support both countries. But thank you, Dean in Mansfield, for bringing that up. I was trying to there sound sensible. I know, but you've got you've literally you've literally got no top on, and you look like a, a dodgy '90s boy band member. Um, Sandra in Somerset. Hi, Sandra. I was Sandra. aiming for a stripper. Hello there. Good evening, both. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Oh, not bad. I was just Good. a bit wound up actually about that. Oh, okay. Lewis, about that Lewis Raymond that you invited. Oh, on. yeah. Um, and where you actually mentioned that you thought it, you actually agree with restorative justice. Yeah, well, I, no, I agree with it in principle, yeah. Right. Have you ever suffered a crime? Um, no. Me. Oh, well, I have suffered a crime, yeah. I've been burgled while, the, while I was in the house and the burglar uh, was burgling around died. me. And then someone had stolen his credit card and then it was restorative justice and he couldn't even face me to do it. He wrote a letter... So do you think that that's good justice? Sandra, no, I don't Sandra. think it's good justice, but I don't... I don't... I, basically... I, no, so, I don't how agree. I feel about this is, if, oh. if both parties feel comfortable, because I know that a lot of people, to be able to move on from certain crimes, do feel that that helps them. Now, I don't agree with any one party saying, oh. I want to do this, but the other party no. doesn't want it. It has to be a, a, a thing that, to, that mutually mutually agree that this is something that might help both parties. That's how I feel about it. From him, he used it after he died, and then he went to the shops, he got cash back and bought shopping, and all he had to do was pay back the money. It didn't... The money wasn't that it was the actual... What he did. Well, yeah, and I know how that feels, Sandra, because when I got burgled and I was in the house and I was screaming and I thought that the guy was going to do more than just burgle me, which I don't need to say to you, I think you quite understand what I mean by that. I've be, I was very, very frightened. I didn't sleep properly for about three years after that at all. I used to walk around the house turning lights on and off. I was so, so frightened because I couldn't believe that he had the barefaced cheek to steal things around me while I was screaming and in my bed. That, that, so I do know what you mean, Sandra, as in, as in, you're right, this affects people more than 
than a lot of people can understand and can affect them for many, many years Dan to Danielle, come. Danielle, can I gently suggest that one of the big problems you've got, if, if people are talking about individual cases, we can't no. comment on individual cases. All you can say is what works for you and what doesn't work yeah. for you. Yeah, and you I only out. agree if only if both parties feel that that's a good a, a good way forward. I don't think that it should be forced upon anyone. I mean, if no. you've been a victim of anything, it, it's what works for you that's important. Exactly, not uh, forced Liam upon you. Liam is in Wigan. Liam, you're on Talk TV. You've got a minute. That's right. Uh, my question is, do you think that women should be the treated the same as men in domestic abuse cases? In and domestic they, abuse I, 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 Liam, Liam, I'm going to leave it there because the, my concern is this is going to get very specific. The answer is yes. Thank you very much. Sean is in Romford. Andre, how are you? And Daniel, great to see you. Thank you. Uh, Andre, you, you look like you just narrowly missed out on a, like a, a take that uh, extra, you know? Well, let mean? me tell you something, Sean. Let me tell you something, Sean. He is Sean. giving me Gary Barlow let, vibes. Let me tell you something, Sean. It's a real tribute to your generosity that you believe I narrowly missed out, because I think I would have come last. I mean, I, I accept I would have entered, but I don't accept I would have come anywhere near with him. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, was, I was down the uh, the pub in Romford today, and I know, Andre, you... you uh, You've got connections with Romford. Uh, can I tell you, Romford is one of my favourite places in Britain. I'm going to tell you why. Because it's a patriotic place. It's a place where people work hard. You know, people take the mick out of Essex. But I'll tell you what, hard-working people who do something... And Romford Market is one of the best traditional... It's not historic, but one of the most best traditional markets in the country. I love Essex. I like I Romford. I wouldn't live there, yeah, but I do it, love Essex. <laughs> You're totally correct with the Romford Market. It is fantastic. There's some proper, proper, proper... Old, old, school, old school characters there. there. Yeah, but um, speaking about ex-bully dogs, I see a few of blue tubes on the pub tonight and uh, they should be uh, exterminated, you know, uh, to be fair. Some, some, some what, sorry? Ex-bully dogs. Oh, right, so you, so, you, so you believe they should be. Do, do, you know, do you know something? I'm nervous about it. I think that... The problem is when you breed when you breed dogs, you've got to be responsible. I don't believe that you should outlaw breeds. I think that no. the dog owners should be responsible for the dog. No, yeah. no. But my main point to yourself uh, and uh, Daniel as well is: how do you think um, in the next general election? How do you think uh, reform is going to go? with the Tory party there's not a lot in it now it's about seven points Andre so so I'm I'm, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it there for, for reasons I won't explain but I believe in Romford uh, the Conservatives will do incredibly well because the Member of Parliament is incredibly patriotic but I think in other parts of the United Kingdom the Conservatives will struggle for to, against reform I think that we have squandered I, I say we because I'm a Conservative Party member I freely admit that I think we have squandered that opportunity in 2019 uh, to 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 bring the red wall in. People who, who live in where you live and where I used to live, I think, did support the Conservatives in 2019 and now I think are pretty... Uh, Boris Johnson said, we won't let you down. And actually, the Conservatives did let them down, didn't well, they? I mean... Not a surprise for you, perhaps. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, thank you so yeah. much. So I think we've got one more, Sean, and he's in Peterborough, and he literally does have a minute. Sean, you're, in, you're on Talk TV. Hello, mate. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Yeah, I'm just wondering what your thoughts but I'm a Celtic fan, a Man United fan, and my, my family played for Celtic, two of my family played for Celtic, won cup final medals with them, right? But I live in England and I have done for most of my life. I'm down here, South East, but what, I, I've seen recently all these Palestinian flags in the Celtic fans' stadiums Mm. And it, it rails me. Mm. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. Uh, thank you so much. So the answer, the answer to that question is really simple. There are some people within the Celtic fan base who, who are sectarian. There's some people within the Rangers fan base who are sectarian. And there are some people within both those fan bases who believe that if you're a Protestant, you should support uh, Israel. And if you're a Catholic, you should support Palestine. That is complete and total nonsense. Sectarianism has done nothing for the United Kingdom. It's done nothing for the Middle East. It's done nothing for Northern Ireland. And the idea that we would want to 
to import it in that way, I think is, is shameful, disgusting and something we should oppose. Can I just say, I've got to share a cap on with you. You are going to get that dress, aren't you? We shall see no. you at the same time next week, next Saturday. See you there. <laughs> This is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4 pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. We're here! Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, or on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to make it 